everyone. I thought I'd share today a little bit about IXL and how it can help with your lesson planning. IXL is one of the programs that we pay for and to an extent it's available in every school. So at KCC we have it for math and ELA. At the high school we have some limited licenses for math and at Quashnet you have it for math, ELA, science, and social studies. So think about that frame of reference as I go through this tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about skill plans and how they can align with the lessons that you're doing in class. So first thing I'm going to do is sign into my IXL account and then once I do that I'm going to be clicking on learning up here in the top left hand corner. And so what it's going to do is it's going to bring me to the learning page. Right now I'm looking at math, but I'm going to go here and instead of viewing by grades, I'm going to do view by skill plans. So there's a lot of interesting things happening here. Right now I have it limited to math, but I could put it to all subjects so I could see what all of my options are. Um, for different grades and different schools, you'll have different options, which makes sense. So you can also filter by grade level if you want to and just put in your grade level. And so right now we're looking at their seasonal spotlight section and this changes from time to time, obviously based on the season. What's in here that I think is awesome is that they still have their fall power up for both ELA and math and that's from kindergarten right on up. And what that does is that takes last year's skills, so say for a sixth grader, it takes the fifth grade skills and puts it into a practice that they can do each day. So let's say that we have a sixth grade class and we're looking to do the fall power up. It's a four week program and we all know that this fall certainly has not been like any other fall. So you could call it a winter power up. You could call it a whatever power up. I don't think that it has to be done in the fall to be effective, but this is a four week program and it has five day a week options for students to work on. So what it does is just goes through, like I said, last year's skills that should hopefully be intact, but if not, it will be very informative for you as a teacher and for a student as they start to self evaluate where they are and their skill acquisition. So also they have in their seasonal section, this weekly, um, there we go, the weekly boost. So this is a 32 week program and it's a three day a week program. So let me go into language arts and let's look at second grade for instance. So this is three days a week and three different skills and it's organized by the week all the way through to 32 weeks. So it's something that you can schedule as part of say their weekly contract by Friday. You know, I wanna make sure that you do three days worth of your weekly boost you have that for ELA and math is offered through um, IXL and they can work on those skill plans in, wherever you decide to put them in the curriculum. So now I'm going to go back to skill plans and I'm going to scroll down a bit because underneath are your state standards for and I'm going to click off of language arts. I'm going to put all subjects. It's going to show you what state standards are available to you. So let's say you've looked at your MCAS data from last year and you realize your students in math in fifth grade are lacking some certain skills in areas that you want to be able to strengthen. So let's say that's place value. So I come down to whatever the um, whatever the domain is, and then I can unpack that standard into targeted skills. So let's say it's place value. I can hover my mouse over place value, and it will kind of give me a little um, slide presentation showing me some sample questions that students will see as they progress. It's great for planning, great for prepping for this coming year's um, MCAS. And then also, if I go back up and I click on skill plans again, and I'm going to make sure that my arrow for this purpose is just under all subjects. But remember, you can narrow it down. I'm going to go below here and I'm going to see what textbooks are available that align with what it is that I'm doing in my classroom. So we have big ideas math. We have wonders in here. We have everyday mathematics. So you can look through and see what it is that we have available that matches what it is that you're doing in your class. So let's say I were to go to the everyday mathematics. I could click on that. I could open up my grade level. Let's say I'm looking at third grade and I'm on unit four. 
I don't know why I said four, that's a long scroll, and I'm working on line plots. So there are two IXL lessons or skill sets that are in here that you can assign to students that will go over those exact lessons that you're doing in everyday math. They have aligned everything and they actually say in their trainings, if there's not a textbook in here that we should be letting them know and they'll work on getting that developed as well. Now I want you to remember also that IXL skills are adaptive and they'll provide support for students as they achieve mastery at each target. So they can achieve mastery when their SMART score gets up to 100 and when they are getting too proficient, it will be a score of 80. Students are able to progress through that SMART score and monitor it themselves, but also teachers are able to see that. So some of these things I can't show you on my account because I'm not a teacher and I don't have those features that you have, but you can go to those skill plans and you'll be able to go ahead and pin them to your classroom so it's at the top of your list, but also at the top of your students list. So when you float your mouse over this section of what it is that you want students to do, I'm gonna get rid of, oh, I don't have a grade level. So when I float my mouse, you will see on yours little pins and they'll look like this. They'll have little pins on them and you'll be able to pin those by clicking on the little pin icon and it will pin it to the top of your dashboard as well as to the top of your students. You'll also be able to go in and in your score grade for students, you'll also be able to see how they're doing and what their SMART score is for each student for each skill. As you're going through the skills themselves, you'll also be able to assign them to certain students. So let's say I'm going in here to um, the fall power up and I want to assign it to some of my seventh graders, you'll see that there'll be a star there. I don't have it because I'm not a teacher, but once you click on that, you'll be able to assign it to individual students, to individual classes. You can make groups of students so that you don't have to give the same work to every student. You can really target what it is that they need. And like I said, where IXL is adaptive, it's going to see how the students are doing. So as you assign it to those students, they'll see the recommendations at the top of their wall and they'll be able to access it by doing the same thing, just clicking on the star and it'll bring them to what it is that you've suggested. And those students will begin answering those questions right away. If they are correct, they'll get positive feedback, letting them know that they're, they're on the right track. And each skill is adaptive, so the questions will become more challenging as they go along. IXL is going to monitor the number of questions, the time that it's taking them to solve them. And also, if you're a teacher and you want to hide that timer, you can in the settings as your teacher dashboard. But um, their SMART score will go up over time. If they hit an incorrect answer, they're going to get instant feedback as well, explaining anything specific to that question, giving them a review or a tip to remember and how to solve the correct answer. It helps students learn from their mistakes and then increase that SMART score. At the bottom, they can click on got it and then they'll continue making progress in that skill. So their SMART score is a proprietary thing. It's not a percentage. It's not like, you know, a 100 that you get on a spelling test. It's just a number that represents their accuracy, their consistency, and their level of difficulty. So they're looking to get an 80, which re represents being proficient, but ultimately they're looking to get a 100 to represent that mastery. So if you have any questions, let me know. IXL is an amazing program, and I feel like we should do these dives from time to time to see maybe how you can use it differently to meet your and your students needs. So reach out anytime. Thanks for listening.